Hi guys, welcome to our channel Undefinable. I'm today's host, Alex. Have you noticed that in news reports about car accidents, there is more emphasis on female drivers than male drivers, although there are more men than women involved in those accidents each year. According to a report released by the China Jellico Big Data Research Institute, defendants in traffic accident behaviors accounted for 94.6% of males and 5.4% of females. Among them, the average incident rate of female drivers was 0.25, and that of male drivers was 2.2, which is almost nine times higher than that of female drivers. Why then has women in the driver's seat became road killers on news media? Where comes the stereotype? This may be caused by the agenda-setting function of the media, giving one kind of story repeatedly high visibility. The agenda-setting function theory was developed in the 1970s by Maxwell McCombs and Donald Shaw, and mainly talks about this. The media can affect what the public thinks through the issues they report on. But it's not like the media has everything in control. The statement, in fact, comes like this. The media is not telling us what to think, but what to think about. Thereby, who sets the agenda for what has become a hot topic for discussion right now in society. But so far, media coverage of gender issues still seems biased. Recently, the controversy between Communist Youth League of China and extreme feminism has sparked a heated discussion. And we may see how the media set the agenda on gender issues through this case. On April 12th, the Communist Youth League of China published an article on their Weibo official account titled Extreme Feminism Cannot Be Tolerated after they were criticized for not including a picture of women in a series of photos showing key Communist Party moments. The Youth League claimed that those extreme feminism has become a malignant tumor on the internet, and a criticism on them were an act of cyber violence against the editors. Basically, according to Maxwell, there are two levels of agenda setting. The first level affects on the public's focus of attention and its perception of what are the most important issues of the day. While in this case, we have to look further into the second level of agenda setting effects, the attribute agenda setting. Let's think of the items on the agenda setting at the first level as a set of objects. These objects have specific attributes that are emphasized on the media's and the public's agendas to varying degrees. Feminism's voice, as an example, may be one of the attributes of the event, but the question is, how much did it count in the beginning? For example, the so-called evidence of extreme feminism, a comment on the former release of the Youth League's account, only got three likes. So it is a typical question to ask why the media intentionally manipulate the media content to emphasize this attribute. To answer this question, firstly, we'll have to know what kind of media is the Communist Youth League and whose interests their attitudes represent. Well, it is a secondary representative of the Communist Party, but neither a news agency nor a ministry spokesperson. Secondly, we want to focus on what else happened before and after the event to stimulate this kind of media attitude. To delve into it, this event is actually a part of the ideology contest. Like Chairman Mao, the founder of People's Republic of China said, women hold the half sky. Equality between different genders become a core part of the CCP ideology, and there have been more and more proactive activities to benefit women. It's all good at the beginning, but gradually it went too far, at least from some people's perspective. There came the conflict, and under such conflict, the neutral point was pushed by the group with a louder voice in the mass. The neutral yesterday will be regarded as radical the next day. The growing conflict seems to be tearing the communities apart, and officials finally react. Therefore, from this point of view, feminism is an agenda-worthy issue, however not in this event and not in this way. Because we have to take into consideration that nowadays the audience has a growing ability to react to or shape the content or even to supply the content themselves. As we can see, due to the controversial agenda they set, 
the antagonism between the two groups grew more intense. So, what is the ethically correct way for the media to operate the agenda-setting function? According to Kelly Leiter, communication professor from the University of Tennessee, the proper way to express the agency's position in its report should not affect its completeness and precision. The related factors to this topic include subjectiveness of the journalists themselves, self-censorship, and moral purpose in reporting. The lack of self-censorship may lead to the release of a controversial message. At the same time, a redundant value judgment of the journalists on the news event will result in producing a subjective article of the case instead of an objective report on it. Now we have a better understanding of how agenda setting is functioned by media. Clearly, the decision of the media on what and how they report have a significant impact on audiences. Considering that, next time when you come across with a controversial news event on the internet, remember to ask yourself, what agenda do the media want to set? Why they set it?